Okay guys, here's the chart I made to explain the differences between ISO and EI and how highlight stops factor in. EI, or exposure index, is pretty simple. Changing your exposure index will not affect the analog signal. EI places your camera at its native ISO no matter what you do, so that you are always acquiring the widest possible dynamic range. When you change EI, you're only changing the digital signal. You'll see these changes on your monitor or your EVF, but they're not affecting the raw image. Your actions are what are affecting the raw image. When you change your EI, it will appear as if the scene brightness has changed on your monitor. It is only when you react to this by physically changing the aperture or adjusting the lighting that the actual image will be affected. Kinefinity warns you in their manual not to use EI unless you fully understand it. And they do this because they understand that if you do not have enough light in a scene to accomplish proper exposure, or there is too much light and you haven't compensated for this by stopping down or using shade or a filter, your final image is gonna suffer because the camera is going to record at native ISO no matter what you do. As a result, you may be over or underexposed, and sometimes no amount of work in post is gonna bring it back, raw or not. So how do highlights factor in here? Well, your highlight stop setting is useless here. I personally think it should be grayed out in your settings when you're in EI mode because it won't affect your image. Instead, your EI settings are going to dictate the balance of your dynamic range. If you increase your EI value, you will increase your headroom, giving you more stops between your analog clip and middle gray. This pushes down your middle gray, giving you less stops in your shadows. The opposite's gonna happen if you decrease your EI. Your shadow stops will increase, pushing your middle gray up and leaving you less stops in the highlights. There's an important distinction here between EI and ISO. If you push your ISO past 800, your middle gray isn't really gonna change. That's why they give you the highlight settings. So you can use those to adjust your dynamic range balance if you're in ISO mode. By contrast, if you're in EI mode and you increase your EI above 800, you will progressively increase your headroom until you hit some ceiling that I'm unaware of, probably 6.6 .6 stops, but don't quote me on that. On the top, we got ISO. If you go into your camera's sensitivity settings and select ISO, this is how your model is gonna work. Your native ISO is 800. If you shoot at that ISO and you leave your highlight settings at 4.3, uh, the default, you will have approximately 4.3 stops of headroom. That means 4.3 stops between middle gray and where your sensor clips, uh, also referred to as your ADC clip, your analog clip. If you increase or decrease your ISO, the amount of stops between middle gray and where your signal clips will not change. Your dynamic range will also not change. According to Kinefinity, until you reach a high enough ISO that introduced noise begins to degrade your image, you won't lose dynamic range. In the Terra 6K, this is around 2500 ISO. I'm not really sure where it is on the Mavo. I checked on the Chinese manual and I couldn't find it. So anyway, it's probably a little higher. When you increase ISO, you're effectively adding gain or boosting the analog signal before it reaches the digital processor. So now let's talk about the highlight stop setting which only applies, again, to ISO mode. It's important to know that no matter what I change in my highlight stops, my dynamic range isn't gonna change. I'm no longer affecting the brightness of the image. I'm only affecting the balance of my dynamic range. In other words, how many stops I have in the highlights and how many stops in the shadows. The camera will be set to a default of 4.3. Again, this is Kinefinity's recommended level to give you the most balanced amount of stops in your highlights and your shadows. If you increase this number, you will increase the headroom or the amount of stops between middle gray and your analog clip. For this to happen, middle gray will drop, providing you a lower amount of stops in your shadows. By contrast, if you decrease the highlight stops, the opposite will happen. Your middle gray will rise, dropping the amount of stops in your highlights and raising the amount of stops in your shadows. You are going to find that if you raise your highlight stops, your minimum ISO will also increase. For instance, if you increase your highlight stops to 6.6 .6, all the way at the top, you won't be able to drop your ISO below 1000. Okay, so you should ask yourself, how is it possible to change the location of middle gray without changing ISO or adding light to my sensor? The answer is it's kind of not. Um, there's no free lunch, people. Here's what's going on. You start at that 4.3 stops. There's your middle gray. Here's our uh, native ISO, okay? Well, a couple of things are happening simultaneously 
when you change that highlight stop setting. If you think back to EI, to your exposure index, the screen was getting brighter, but the analog signal didn't change. So you would stop down your aperture or you would add light or whatever um, to get back to proper exposure. Well, in this case, um, your screen has gotten brighter, but at the same time, your analog gain has dropped. And you don't see this. The ISO number is not changing. But these two things happen simultaneously and cancel each other out. The screen gets brighter, analog gain drops, and it appears as if nothing has changed except that you have gained headroom. Now you might ask yourself, well, I gained headroom, but my dynamic range, it didn't suffer. How did my dynamic range stay the same when I changed my highlight stops? Well, what happened was another thing, which is that your shadows were boosted via an adjusted curve to get more dynamic range in your shadows. As we can see on this third bar, if you notice at the bottom, I extended it down so you have the same amount of dynamic range as you did when you started, when it was 4.3 highlight stops. But because you adjusted your, your, your shadows were boosted, because that curve was adjusted, it brings you back to full dynamic range. And you can tell this because at that higher, in those higher stops, the noise will increase in your shadows. And the, this is counterintuitive because you would think, well, my analog gain is dropping as we can see on the left. So shouldn't my shadows get cleaner? Well, they should accept that now they're being digitally boosted via that curve they're being boosted and that's increasing the noise in your shadows. So this, this is the trade-off. I know it's complicated, but this is what's really happening when you're changing that highlight setting. So you should just something you should be aware of. Um, if you know, you're like me and you get real meticulous about these things, it's pretty interesting. Um, obviously you don't need to go this deep, uh, but personally I think it's, it's a good thing to understand your camera uh, as well as you can. So. There you go.